and Lenny again talking about now we're still in unit eight okay. um, and we did the active participles okay so now we're going to do the middle passive and and uh, and that's it the middle <laughs> and the passive ones okay um, we're going to organize this a little bit differently than the book does which the book's um, exhibit of these forms is on pages 208 through 211 um, Belisi has written that up there in pink and um, why is there an eight over it? A unit eight. <laughs> oh, it's unit eight. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, um, and so what we're going to do is first we're going to do participles that are both middle and passive. That is the present and the perfect participles. Um, so you, you the forms are, are the same whether they're one or the other. Okay. And you have to disambiguate them on the basis of various criteria that we'll, we've been learning. There are participles that are only passive. That's the future and the heirs participles, right? And then correspondingly, finally, there are participles that are only middle. They're going to change up. eventually. Yep. There it goes. <laughs> uh, namely, future and aorist participles, okay? So we've got three sets here. Um, and we're going to start with uh, one, those that are both middle and passive. First, the present, and then the perfect ones. So... Um, you're going to see patterns here, um, and there isn't a whole lot to learn. There's basically one uh, one new set of, of uh, iatrochidal endings. Um, but here's the way the present participle formation works. You start with the first principal part um, after removing the personal ending, which is an omega. So lu o, it gives you lu, pao o, pao, and so forth, and pi deo o, pi deo. And then you add the thematic vowel for the present participle. Not all participles have a thematic vowel. Um, the ones that do uh, uh, are, are the, the present and the future. Um, and, uh, and that's it. Okay, the others do not. Um, but the, the, so you add the thematic vowel, which is an O. Remember we talked about this before. The contrast between participles having an O thematic vowel is with infinitives that have an E thematic mm -hmm. vowel. So uh, we'll see more about that once we understand the way in which these words actually work in, in the language, how they're translated um, and how they function. So you have the first principal part, the thematic vowel, O and, or Omicron, and then the suffix menos, mene, menon. Um, notice Belisi's put an accent on mene because uh, the accent of these Participles is recessive. It goes on the third to last syllable, but in the case of mene, since you've got a long final, the accent has to move up one syllable. Um, that suffix menos mene menon is um, is inflected exactly like agathos, mm -hmm. so it's not a new adjective formation. It's just uh, second declension masculines in the masculine gender, second declension neuters of the type ergon or doron in the neuter and first declension feminines of the type agathe or techne in the feminine gender, okay? So that's the, the rule for the formation of present middle and passive participles. Now let's look at perfect middle and passive participles. You start with a perfect middle passive stem, the next to the last one, okay, the fifth one, um, and you remove the personal ending from that form, the my, and you add menos, mene, menon, Notice this time, Belisi's put an accent every time on the E. And that's because this participle is the only one that doesn't have recessive accent um, of, of the ones that we've seen before. We're going to see one other. Well, that's not true. We saw we saw aorist, second aorist participles don't have recessive accent, right? There you accent the thematic vowel. So here we have non-recessive accent of a different kind on the men of the menos suffix which is both middle and passive. Um, notice also that there is no thematic vowel in the perfect middle or passive participle. Just like the perfect middle or passive indicative forms, there's no thematic vowel either. Okay. Right. Okay, so because of that confrontation between the end of the stem, okay, uh, not, and, and there's no thematic vowel, and then you have a menos suffix, you're going to have funny things that happen um, but they're the same funny things that happen in the first principle, the, in the fifth principle part. So, for example, it, we'll, we'll look at some examples in a minute. But if, if you look at pefulag mai, when you take off the mai, you get pefulag menos. 
So our rule really works. If you start with the, that principal part, you remove the my and you add the menos, you're done. Mm -hmm. But you put the accent in the wrong place. Ecolag. Menos. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. Just testing you guys. Okay. Good. All right. So now let's move on to participles that are only passive. Those are both middle and passive. Now we're the only passive ones. And these are aorist passive and future passive. So um, with these, you start with the aorist passive stem, the last stem of the, of the verb, like eleuthane or epideuthane. We didn't say it, we didn't write it in, but you have to remove the augment, right? Because, again, participles don't have tense, they have aspect, right? Um, so you, you remove the augment from the fifth principle part. You don't do anything to remove, in the perfect, you don't remove anything except the personal ending, and the same is true of the present. But in these aorist passives, because their their principal part is a indicative form, as a tense, then you remove it. Okay, so you remove the augment, um, you remove the the personal ending, that is the eta nu of the last principal part, and for it you substitute eis, esa, n. Okay, um, the genitive is entos, eises, entos, and the dative plural masculine and neuter is eisi. So this is a third declension adjective, uh, ace, entos, ente, enta, and so forth in the masculine, esa, eses, and so forth. That's second declension of the thalata type. We've seen that in all these participles that have third declension masculine and feminine, the masculine and neuter rather, and the feminine is a thalata type feminine adjective. Um, Pideothes, pideothes, a pideothen, beautiful. Let me see. Okay, that's our that's an example. Um, the forms are not difficult once you understand the genitives and the dative plural. So that's what you need to learn. Okay, now we're going to learn look at the future participle. <laughs> so now we're looking at the future passive forms, and with them you also begin with the um, last principle part, the aorist passive form. Um, number six, minus the augment, okay, and the new that's uh, part of that form, and, and what you do is you add an S, um, which is a sign of futureness, um, the O thematic vowel, which is the thematic vowel for participles, and then the suffix menos, mene, menon. So again, these future uh, passive forms have the sign of the future, and then they have what look like middle endings. Okay. Mm -hmm. or, so anyhow, um, whereas the future, the aorist passive ones have active endings. It's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, so there's our example. Eleuthane would be the last principal part. You remove the e, you remove the nu, you get luthe, and to that you add the s, the o, and the menos. And it's somenos, somene, somenon. All right? Now, yep, go ahead. <laughs> So now we're going to move to the next category, which is participles that are only middle. Okay, and so that means we're going to do the future middle and the aorist middle, both the first aorist and the second aorist middle. Okay, so the future middle participles, these are, these are the easiest, I think. You start with the future stem, um, the second principal part, you remove the personal ending omega, you add the thematic vowel, and then the menos suffix, mene, meno. Um, for, so, for example, for luo, it's going to be lu, sa, menos. Okay. Yep. So, lu, so, you remove the omega, you get, and it keeps the s, you get a, menos. For the aorist middle, you're going to start with the aorist stem, remove the augment, and just directly to what's there, add menos. So if we have elusa, for example, we remove the epsilon, we get lusa, and then we add menos, mene, menon, lusa, menos, and so forth. For the second aorist, when we only have one second aorist verb, lepo, you start with the, th that principal part, elepon, you remove the augment, and the final, nu, okay? So you get from elepon, you get lipa, and you add an the the um, 
suffix menos, notice that you've got an accent on the O. Okay, that's normal. Uh, that is recessive accent, but it's also normal for secondary forms that the thematic vowel has the accent. Okay, so it's menos, mene, menon, Belisi, we and I, we ran out of space there, <laughs> so we got some dots. Okay, thanks.